What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here and it is Tuesday today and you all know what that means. Another episode of the Premier League's perspective. A big weekend of football just gone. Tottenham obviously claiming North London <laughs> yet again. And staying top of the league and for And staying week. top of the league, exactly. But we have got many, many games over the Premier League weekend to talk about. Um, and let's start off with the game at Stamford Bridge as Chelsea beat Leeds 3-1. Yeah. Um, what did you make out of that game? Yeah, and it was quite worrying actually looking at Chelsea because they seem to be finding different ways of playing and different ways of winning and they seem quite adaptable. Um, like team, that Kurt Zuma won't stop scoring. Honestly, he's becoming one of such a big threat from set pieces. And I identified him at the beginning of the season as probably one of their big weaknesses. But I tell mm. you what, he's proving me wrong week by week because yeah. his partnership with Thiago Silva is really building, really building well. They, I thought in this game it could be a potential banana skin for Leeds because Leeds, we all know how they like to press high. They like to use a lot of energy. And if you underestimate them, they can kind of do you, they can outdo you um, if you don't match their energy. And and and, and you know, to be fair to Chelsea in the second half, they absolutely did. Being one 0 down uh, uh, to Leeds is no easy feat to come round, and they absolutely battered them. They battered them. They deserved it. Completely deserved it, and that was a worrying sign. Olivier Giroud scoring on the score sheet again. Uh, man, I mean, he's got to be pushing for a start week in week out, surely. Mate, it makes you think we can we could have had him a year ago. Yeah, we could have. Well, depending on other things, but like people were scoffing at the idea of us signing Giroud. And I, was, I remember I was thinking like. I think it'd be a good signing. And mm. look, uh, he's there's a reason why he's near the top goal scoring chance for France. He always starts for France every game. He's a quality striker. He's a quality striker. You know, completely disrespected the only Arsenal. The only reason people don't want him is because of his Arsenal connections. Let's be honest. Probably, he's good. He's really good. Look, he, is he gonna be? Is he a striker? Um, I, I think. Look, he's not a striker who you want um, leading a title charge. I would say. Mm -hmm. But I would say that if you ha if he's one of your options, it's a very, very good option to have. Of course. And he's exactly, that's exactly what he is for Chelsea. And he's he would get in the Arsenal team right now. Of course, he would with the get way, in the Arsenal team With the way team Arsenal right play football at the moment, um, you know, kind of Arteta, Tony Pulis style football, they need a target man up there because Aubameyang's not just cutting it. Lacazette's not cutting it. You know what I mean? They need someone of Giroud's ilk up there. And his height, his, he's one of the best um, first-time finishers in the league as well when in for cutbacks and crosses and stuff. And uh, and you know and also who you know was also really good Timo Werner again he seems to really be yeah, coming into his own. Yeah, maybe he was good, but he misses oh, sitters every single game. This one was the worst of the lot. Yeah, it was actually going in from Giroud, <laughs> and he blocked it off the line. He blo he tried to put it himself. He actually blocked it off the line. It was an incredible, incredible miss. But I must say, he's starting to make an influence game by game now, and he's starting to find space. He's starting to make chances and um, be available for in good in good um, positions. I think he got maybe two assists or one assist in this game. I thought he was great. He got yeah, he got one assist in the ninety third minute for Pulisic's goal. Um, but yeah. when when you look at Werner, you would say that he hasn't really hit the heights of what he did at Leipzig. You know, not yeah, but it's still very early. Don't know, what games I'm, what in. I'm saying is he hasn't hit the heights since he's been at Leipzig. But he's scoring goals. Yeah, he's scoring goals. He's getting assists. He's having an influence. And I think once he proper settles in there, they're going to what a player they've got. And you said he's missing a lot of chances. But he's getting in all these positions. Yeah. Chelsea looks serious again. As I say, you know waiting for them to drop points. They ha they haven't really had a convincing win against a big team yet like we have, but the way they're dispatching uh, the, the teams b uh, below them with such ease is a bit of a worry. You know, how they bat just swatted away Burnley, easy, like we struggled against them, swatting away Leeds. Uh, so look, it was a very good weekend for Chelsea. In terms of Leeds, um, how do you assess they've been this season? Good, good. I think that when they start the season, Maybe people, th um, maybe Leeds, some Leeds fans, would, Leeds fans are dreaming of a European chase, and at the moment they're sitting just above Arsenal in 14th. So I think maybe. I mean, if, if you would have told Leeds you'll be sitting above Arsenal at this exactly, stage of the season, they'll take handle. your heart out. But I look, they're playing well. I think maybe as a twinge of disappointment because performances have dropped off a bit from the earlier start of the season. But I think they've got to be happy, Leeds, at the moment. When I look at Leeds, uh, I want to talk about Patrick Bamford because he's scoring a lot of goals this season. And that's a surprise to me because when I watched him in the Championship last year, he could hardly hit a barn door. Yeah. Really couldn't. I mean, I thought he was awful in the Championship last year. and He's still got 17 goals, didn't he? Look, 17 he, or 18 goals. He got Look, he got quite a few goals, but Bielsa was always trying to find something new up there because Bamford wasn't kind of doing what he's... He could have got a lot more than, than what he got last season. I thought he wasn't... When you put him in the Premiership, I didn't think he was going to do it. I really didn't. 
Um, there were times uh, watching Leeds last season where you know they would struggle to score goals and Bamford would have so many chances in a game and just not put any away. Um, they ended up getting promoted, winning the league. Uh, so credit to them and credit to Bielsa and credit to Bamford as well um, because I really think he's turned it around this season. And he's actually, it's not, this isn't the first time he's been to the Premier League. He's had a few chances, I remember, with uh, Norwich, I believe, and Middlesbrough, um, both signing him on loan when, when they got promoted. And he really struggled badly, really badly. And he's got his, I think, I think this is was probably one of his final chances, I think, to really give it a good crack in the Premier League. And he's taking it with both hands, you must say. He's become an excellent finisher, really good. Whether he'll keep up for the whole season, we'll have to see, because we've seen strikers, you know, look at Timu Puku last season, great start to the year, yeah. and then kind of falls off and doesn't really recover. So we'll see about Pamford, but at the moment, you've got to say, he's playing really, really well, and credit to him. All right, let's go to Upton Park as West Ham lost to Manchester United by three. Well, the Olympic Stadium. Oh, the Olympic Stadium, yeah. Uh, Upton Park's a block of flats now, I forgot. <laughs> um, Man United won 3-1 at um, the Olympic Stadium. Um, you got to say, Man United was shocking for pretty much 70 minutes and won the game. Yeah. And you know what? They again, they keep doing it week after week after week. And I was saying it last year, and it's a lot last year, sorry, last week. I was saying it last week, and I'm saying it again this week. First half for the first hour, really poor. For, for the first hour, they could have been 3 0 down. They're very, very lucky to be only one. Really lucky. Mm. Hilaire rounds the keeper and slips. Yeah. Jared Bowen uh, sliding at the back post has an open goal. You can't get it on target. Um, Bowen as well had a few opportunities on the break where he, if he's just a bit more pace or a bit more being a bit more clinical, he gets a goal. Um, but luckily for United, only they only go uh, one nil down at the break, and then uh, they bring on Bruno Fernandez and the and you know fair enough. I think they they did turn it around. They were great for half an hour. Uh, Pogba scoring an um, uh, unbelievable goal. We'll get onto Pogba in a minute, but unbelievable strike from him. And obviously Greenwood and Rashford are getting the win for them. And he, uh, to be fair to United. They keep getting the wins at the moment. They're only two points. If they win their game in hand against Burnley, they're two points behind us. And for all their bad play, and they have been bad, no doubt about it, they've been so inconsistent in the way they're playing. Not even game to game, as Gary Neville said, half to half, they're being inconsistent this season. Yet they're still there and thereabouts. So it begs the question: what if you know once they do actually start clicking and having a consistent run of good performances, will they be a threat? Or remains to be seen. But I think. Their inconsistency is what's good, what is what's going to let them down this season. Yeah, although Oli did kind of change things to rest a few players for the Leipzig game. Uh, yeah, that's tonight. Um, so big game it, for them. Yeah, it's a massive game for them. But in terms of that, you know, he started Pogba. Pogba's not getting in their main team at the moment. Uh, Mason Greenwood as well, not really getting in their main team. Both of them getting on the score sheet. Uh, Bruno Fernandez didn't start the game, but as soon as he comes on, uh, completely changes the game for them. Are they too reliant on Bruno? Do you reckon? A bit. I feel like I feel like when Bruno doesn't play well, United don't play well at the moment. It's a bit similar to when we had Ericsson and when Ericsson didn't play well. Yeah, he kind of makes them tick, doesn't he, Ericsson? Um, Bruno. Ericsson made us tick. In. But the thing is with Bruno, he's more like, in terms of his output and general play, he's more similar to like uh, like Delhi than Ericsson in terms of he will how he can have a shocker and then just turn up for like one moment mm. or a couple moments a yeah. game and really make a difference. Yeah. That's what he's been doing. Look, he's been he's he clearly he's a great player. The, the amount of goals and assists you don't get that if you're not a great player. They are can't quite rely on him, but you know they've got some good players in there. You, you know they look at their front players, their options there: Martial, Rashford, Cavani, uh, Greenwood. Greenwood, Bruno. So, Van der Beek, Beek, exactly. So they really do have some really good options, and it's about making it all click. And I believe. At the moment, Oli is getting by with uh, with how he is, and I think we're quite lucky they still have Oli because I think if they had a better manager, they would be a much more of a threat. Um, and I, but I think at the moment, Oli is um, causing a bit of inconsistency in Man United, and that's why we're seeing some inconsistent performances. But to be fair to them, they are getting decent results, right? Quite good results, you must say. But the question beg question remains: how how much longer can they keep? conceding first and coming back week after week can they keep it up or on the flip side maybe they're going to solve that issue and not go keep going behind cast your mind back I think it's a couple of months now uh, maybe a month and a half or something like that uh, Arsenal go to Old Trafford win everyone's talking about it saying oh uh, are Arsenal going to push on now uh, Man United what's going to happen is Oli going to get sacked since then I don't think United have lost the game and I don't think Arsenal have won a game Arsenal haven't won a game that's the last one the time they won 
Uh, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think not only have United not lost, I think they've won every game. Mm. So they have come back roaring. But the thing is, as I keep saying, although they're getting good results, they're not having the the, the consistent performances that we're seeing, from, for example, from Spurs, who are being consistently solid and good every game. doesn't matter who we're playing. We're being very, very solid. And I'm not seeing the same for United, so I think that's going to catch up with them at some point. But look, fair play. They're winning at the moment. And talking about Pogba... You know, it looks like he could be on his way out now, and that's yeah. going to cause a bit of ruckus, I think. Mino Raiola really putting the spanner in the works this week, claiming that Pogba is looking to leave or he's looking to move Pogba on. Yeah. Um, he said it's over for him, for, for Pogba Man United, and he said there's no point, point being around the bush. It was very clear, this wasn't cryptic whatsoever, very clear, saying I think the best option is for him to leave in the next window, and that's it. I mean, if he's not getting in the starting 11 week in, week out, then he's going to look to move, isn't he? The, the, the great thing is he started against West Ham because they were resting players. Yeah, <laughs> he, they were he resting scored, players he in his life. Great goal! He was awful before the first half. He did get an unbelievable goal in the second half. And we all know how much quality Pogba, Pogba has. He has so much quality, but the fact of the matter is, it hasn't worked ever since he got to United. Mm. That's the fact. It has. He really, really hasn't worked. Whether it's too much pressure on him, whether he doesn't have the players around him, all the excuses you can give, it hasn't worked. And uh, you've put him in this formation, that formation, this partner, that partner, this position, that position. Nothing's worked uh, for in terms of consistency. He's had good games, but in terms of consistently playing a good game week in, week out, it just hasn't worked. So I think United will probably do well just to, I think it's probably best for them just to cut ties and try and find a replacement at this time because it's been four or five years now. It's not like it's been one, two years and oh, let's give it another season. You can't, there's no more seasons to give it. And I think for me personally, uh, they complete. I I know he's a quality player. You know, won the World Cup with France. No, I'm not saying he's a bad player, but I think they thought they were getting a player from Juventus that they didn't realise maybe wasn't as dominant as they thought. Because you remember when he played four three three at Juve, he had Perlo with him, he had Vidal with him. These are world class at the time anyway, world class mm-hmm. central midfielders. Perlo was doing these unbelievable long range passes. It wasn't like they relied on Pogba for passing. Yeah. They had Perlo. They, they didn't rely on Pogba for running. They had Vidal. What they relied oh, on Pogba goals, is for really? they relied on not just for goals, just moments of magic. How many times do you see like on YouTube like him just smashing one in yeah. from twenty five yards? I mean, he but was that scoring was Waldies week in week out. He was, but these were kind of it's a bit like Coutinho kind of thing. It's like he's like a it was like a YouTube player. And I'm not saying he's a bad player by any stretch. I think Coutinho's a good player as well. But I'm saying I think they were watching these clips on YouTube and whatnot, and thinking we're getting the best midfielder in the world, and they didn't realise that Vidal, the help he was getting from Vidal and Perlo was massive, and he could he mm. can't do it all by himself. And then you put him, take him from Vidal and Perlo to Matic and Fred and and. McTominay yeah. and it's a world of difference and you can't really match those heights really so I think that's that's the reality of the situation I think coming buying for him for 90 million putting all that pressure on him when you don't really have the support he had at Juve um, and we're seeing it at the moment I'm not saying he's done awfully you know because I don't think he has but it just has he hasn't lived up to expectations yeah and if they think they're going to get anywhere close to 100 million from him which, which they like to think they got no chance of getting that how much do you reckon he goes for I can't see him for going for over 50 60 million even that is yeah. expensive for him, yeah. the way he's playing. I can't. I can't see. Uh, I can't see being a uh, definitely going to make a big loss. Sixty million tops. I can't see more than sixty. Not just because of how how it's been for him at United, but just because of the current climate. Mm. Who's going to spend the money? I can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and West Ham had Thomas Zuchek scoring again. I mean, West Ham having a good season, aren't they? I know they lost this game, but yeah. they're looking all right. Um. Only against us they they got a point, but against Arsenal they dominated and, and lost. lost. And against yeah. United they should be three 0 up and lost. So uh, they're not really helping us out. They only and then we get against starts we dominated probably by design. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, exactly classic West Ham. But yeah, fair enough. They've been been a very good counter attacking team. Uh, a lot of people back them for the drop at the beginning of the season. David Moyes is doing a really good job there, and uh, he's got them being solid. He's got them exploiting space in behind. Jared Bowen has been fantastic as well this season. And um, if it wasn't for an injury for Antonio, who was playing really well, um, that probably halted their progress a bit because Haller's not quite been up to it. Mm. But I think, uh, yeah, you've got to say they're going to be safe. They'll still probably finish bottom half, I reckon. But I think with a lot of people predicting them to go down, fair play to them. Uh, back on Pogba for a second, there's a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, yeah. I forgot to ask about uh, Pogba and Jose Mourinho. So obviously uh, they had a big falling out um, yeah. at Man United. 
Um, and essentially, there was there was a lot more that was happening in, in the back end with other players as well. But essentially, uh, Man United backed Pogba over Jose Mourinho. Um, do you reckon they're starting to regret that now? Potentially. Potentially. I think a lot of United fans maybe are just a bit happier because the, they weren't happy with the football Mourinho was playing or not, even though they were getting good... You know, the results he was getting at Man United weren't terrible, especially in his second season. But his third season, the results kind of went to went, went, went a bit awry and, and uh, that's when United started pushing, the fans wanted him out because the football wasn't great and the results weren't great. But I think, I think Pog, uh, Mourinho kept saying that uh, or kept hinting anyway that Pogba was a big problem at Man United you know he came back to Man United a, a world champion um, in that su in that summer and kind of uh, wasn't giving it his all and Mourinho's consistently had problems with uh, with Paul Pogba and we're seeing now that the, clearly the issue wasn't Mourinho it wasn't mm -hmm. Mourinho clearly Pogba had to, has an issue uh, being at that club and I think Mourinho, in the end, is going to, is being proved right with how it's, and not only that, with the way he's playing at Spurs as well in the squad, showing that his way of playing and his methods definitely are not outdated and definitely do still work. So I think Man United, in hindsight, probably underrated how well Mourinho was doing, and especially with the whole Pogba situation now, you can definitely see that uh, Mourinho was right to call him out and to uh, to have a problem with him because clearly Pogba thinks he's bigger than the club. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the other Manchester club, Manchester City, as, as they beat Fulham by two goals to nil um, in a very, very comfortable performance and win for Man City. Um, I expect them to win by more goals than that, but Raheem Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne uh, sealed the game after 26 minutes. It was a pretty, it was a pretty much a non-contest, to be honest. Yeah, look, two wins in a row now for City, home to Burnley, home to Fulham. You don't expect anything less than three, three points each uh, from those games, so nothing really to report there. They're probably, as you say, a bit disappointed that they went two and up one in the 20-something minute, 26, yeah, and they didn't get any more goals. Um, Considering how City like to play, it's not like Spurs where uh, on Sunday where we're tuning up and we know we're no point attacking now because uh, there's no need to. But with City, they like to score as many goals as possible. They like to play football. So they'll probably be a slightly bit disappointed with that. But look, two ones on the trot. They're going in the right direction and they, they are going to be a threat. But, of course they are. But, but home to Burnley and Fulham is not where the real tests lie for them. Yeah. Uh, but you know the Man City of last season or two seasons ago would have blown this Fulham team away five or six nil. Did win five nil last week. Yeah. So look, it is what it is. If you win two nil, you just you get you take the points and move on in those games. Fulham at home, you expect the win. Fulham have been terrible this season by and large, uh, even though they did win their first game uh, a week ago. So maybe they're in a bit more of a buoyant move this week uh, against C, uh, which is why maybe it was only two instead of more. But Look, these are the wins you expect, so uh, that's it, really. Kevin De Bruyne are really starting to come to the party this season now. I in felt his last that, two games. Yeah, I felt he had a really slow start to the season. Now he's second in the assist list with six. Is he? Yeah. Um, and Four off Kane still. Yeah, I know, but, you know, Kevin De Bruyne, he's scored and got an assist this weekend. I think he did the same last weekend as well. Um, so he's really starting to come come into this season. Yeah, look, he's a world-class player. Yeah. We all know it. And But as I say, as I said before... Games against Burnley and Fulham, you can do well in those games, but that's not where you're going to be judged because everyone expects you to get the results in those games. And if you don't, it's a disaster. So um, great play by De Bruyne, but he needs to be doing it, start doing it more consistently throughout against all types of teams, not just against your Burnleys and your Fulhams. And I'm sure he will, no doubt about it. I'm just saying that's all he's done so far. Uh, moving on to Burnley, talking about Burnley, let's move on to them as they drew with Everton. I mean, what's gone on with Everton? Yeah. What has happened to them? They're dropping off. They're dropping, dropping off. Dropping like flies, seriously. When was the last time? They they just about scraped past Fulham last, think, week, last week, didn't they? I think they? they've, won, one they've of won, five. won one out of their last six or something like something that. Something like that. And that was just a scrape against Fulham 3-2. And yeah. I watched that game and they easily could have dropped points in that game. Um, what's keeping them afloat at the moment is Calvert-Lewin. Yeah, just, his goals are just yeah. top goal scorer in the league. Is it 11 goals now? One off Son. He's one ahead of Son. So, look. Look, I'm not saying they're a bad team. Cause I, still, I do think they're a good team. I just think people completely overestimated how good they were going to be at the beginning of the season. They got yeah. on the hype train. And I think... Um, at the moment, we're seeing the real the Everton at the moment who are not that consistent in terms of performances and attacking performances. And they, first of all, their defence is uh, definitely not up to scratch in terms of competing for a top four place. It just isn't. The personnel at the back isn't good enough, especially with a couple of injuries like they've had with, Dip, for, with for Denier and whatnot has really cost them. So I think that was always going to cost them. And then 
in terms of going forward, they've got a solid midfield three of Alan, Gomez and Decore. But if you actually look at that, is there much creativity there? Not really. I mean, those Not three really. <laughs> had their best performance of the season against Spurs. And they I think did. they've got worse and worse. Uh, but that, but that, that's the thing. And Spurs, they didn't need to come on to us and create chances. And they, they you know, all they had to do is get a goal and be solid and be hard to break down. That's exactly what they were. But against teams like Newcastle, Burnley, where you have, where they ask you to come on to them and create chances, when you have a midfield tree of that, it's always going to be more difficult because they're not the most creative, the, mo- the most creative of uh, of midfields. What they need really is to get Rodriguez in a more central area because at the moment he's stuck out on the right. Yeah. Get another winger on the right hand side, maybe a Wobi or something, and uh, maybe they can start finding more pockets of space and start creating more chances because at the moment it's uh, not really um, going well for them. And although Ancelotti's in defiant mood in terms of um, insisting that Everton are challenging near the top of the table. I just think that um, their squad is a good. Is they've got a very good first eleven, but I just don't think they have a very that strong squad. And I think they will be. I'm sure they'll be competing for sixth, seventh, but I can't see any more than that for Everton. And I think, and and to be fair, that is an improvement on last season because they finished twelfth. So that's the reality of where they're at, at the moment. Uh, but the thing is with James Rodriguez. He's really dried up. Yeah. He really has dried up. Since that injury, he got a, a niggling injury a couple of weeks ago. He's been, he's been or like a month ago. When was the last time he got a goal and assist? I think it's been like five or six games. I mean, since he really he did hit anything. the ground running when he joined, and then he's just dried up, hasn't he? But that's that's always the case. I remember uh, that's a lot. That's the case. Sorry, with a lot of South American um, flair players, they can come into the Premier League and and do really well. But then once the winter starts and once you're playing games two games a week in in, in the cold. Then your form starts. Strong. I remember Elano came in and he was Elano. a world beater. He was a world beater. He was scoring world class goals week in week out. Man United, all these teams. He was unbelievable. And then once the winter kicked in, it was nowhere to be seen. Yeah. And uh, but I know, and I'm obviously I know James Rodriguez is a player of supreme quality, but at the moment he's struggling for form at the moment. And mm. uh, but the only thing is keeping the photo is the form of Richarlison and Calvert Lewin. Yeah, and you know, they're coming up against the Burnley side who have been shocking this season, let's be honest. Um, before the game, they came into the game with five points the whole season. By the way, I watched that game. They could have lost for Everton. Everton could have lost. Yeah, I know. Burnley were the better side, I thought. Mm. Uh, I saw bits and pieces of the game. I didn't see the whole game. But, you know, you come into a game where I know it's at Turf Moor, but it's not exactly the same going to Turf Moor with the fan, without the fans there. Um, so you look at the game. And you've got to say, Everton will be really, really kicking themselves. They didn't get three points in this game. They had to. They, 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 especially the form they're on. They definitely earmarked this game as a game they need to get three points in. But Burnley, you know, they're scrapping for their lives. They're going to fight for everything. And that's mm-hmm. what they did. All right. Well, let's move on to Liverpool as they beat Wolves 4-0 at Anfield. Um, as fans returned to Anfield, uh, 4-0 with goals from Mo Salah, Gigi Wijnaldum, Joel Matip and an own goal from Nelson Semedo. Um, I've been really disappointed with Wolves this season. You say that, but it's their best start to a season. I know it's their best start, but in terms of the way they've played the game in the last couple of seasons, they just seem not at it really this season. I don't know. I, don't, I think it's been pretty par from, from Wolves. I don't think they've been any worse or better. They've been pretty... I think maybe they're our, struggling to score goals. They are struggling, but what I would say is Ruben Neves hasn't quite been as good as he has been. Uh, I don't think Nelson Semedo has has added no. the kind of influence that Matt Doherty had last season. I agree with that. He's still getting to grips with it at the moment. Semedo, he's struggling quite a and bit. And obviously with that horror injury to Raúl Jiménez as well, so he's out. So they're going to struggle to score even more goals. Yeah, but they're Wolves. What do they? Uh, they they don't expect to be anywhere else but where they are. They're not really expecting to be top four, top five, top six, although they maybe expected to give it a go. But, you know, it's not like the manager's going to be under pressure if they finish eighth this season, you know yeah. what I mean? So I think Wolves have been OK. They're always going to be a tough uh, team to play against. But I tell you what, Liverpool, doesn't matter how many injuries they have, it doesn't seem to stop slowing them down. And I'm, I'm, well, I'm waiting for the moment where injuries start to catch up with them. And I thought, you know, when the draw against but Brighton last week and I thought they played quite poor and I was like, okay, maybe it's starting to catch up. But the way they dispatch Wolves so uh, easily and with Trent coming off the bench as well, he's come back from injury now. Um, that makes me worried a bit that maybe these injuries aren't going to have as big effect as we would anticipate it. I'm, I'm, look, I, th- I kind of think they will. I know it was a very good win for Liverpool uh, against Wolves, but I kind of think in the long term, not having Gomez and Van Dijk in your back two is, is surely going to have some sort of effect. But in the short term at the moment, you've got to say it's very impressive how they're dealing with it. Of course it is. Of course it is. I mean, with the amount of injuries, everyone were licking their lips. But I still genuinely believe, I've been saying this now 
uh, for the past couple of months uh, since Spurs have kind of looked like they could be potentially challenging at the top all season. I've been saying that this is always going to be Liverpool's league to lose. Always this season. Uh, they're in the ascendancy. They're in the, They're on the same points as us with a much, much depleted squad. Let's be honest. They're only going to get better and better all season. That's the honest truth of the matter. They're Liverpool. They're a class act. Uh, um, they got I, I, class I, I, all over the pitch. I wouldn't necessarily say they're definitely going to get better and better all season because Gomez and Van Dijk are out for the season. Yeah, I know that, but I think that they'll get more used to playing with each other as the season goes on as yeah, well. Yeah, on the flip side, they could get found out. They could do. They, they could. could. That's, 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 that's in, in the I, short term, they're dealing with it. They're dealing yeah, with it really I, well. They've but just got too much quality to get worse, I think. I think they can, I think that you go through periods where you might really struggle and, and might really... Um, and I think they might go through a really tough period. They haven't really done that yet. They did a bit at the beginning, but I think since the injuries, they've really just steam, steamrolled ahead and haven't really let, let it affect them. But once the games really start coming thick and fast... Like, I mean, they have been, haven't they? I know they have, but in the December time, when they really have to use their squad... I mean, because of this day and age, November has been like a if bit you look of at December. The, if they, yeah, but if you look at their past four games, they've lost to Atlanta, they drew to Brighton, but then they've won a few... Uh, they've won, beat Wolves and they beat uh, they won another, I think yeah, Leicester and everyone's talking about how brilliant Spurs have been and we're on level points with them yeah we have been brilliant compared to what we were last season mm -hmm. so it's different it's different Liverpool have been how, how have been worse than they were last season because, uh, like, and, um, and don't, it's all down to injuries but it's but I know they're level points for us, but I'm not doubting their quality. They're a supremely world class, well coached, well drilled team who know exactly how to play, and you, it doesn't. And you can put players in that system and it will, and make it work. I'm just saying, in the long term, will they be able to keep it up with all these injuries? Will uh, you know, Nico Williams at right back or whoever they're playing at centre back? Is he going to have to keep keep up these forms? Well, this look, form Trent's not back now, so Nico Williams won't have to play at right back for much longer. Yeah, but who's playing at centre back? There's Matip and Fabinho. Are they going to? Yeah, so it's been they're okay. Good players, I guess. Matip and Fabinho. They are. They are good players. They are good players. Maybe they will be able to keep up. I just feel I like they're going to go through a tough period. I think. Yeah, I think every team are going to go through a tough period. But like I said, I firmly believe this is Liverpool's league to lose of course it is even with no one disagreeing with that even with the injuries and when you look at the squad and their, the teams that they're playing week in week out yes they drew with Brighton but look to dispatch Wolves like that 4-0 yeah. with a depleted squad it's impressive it's absolutely impressive and I, I can just see them getting better and better in it and when you're talking about title challenges it worries me to say to, to come up against Liverpool of course it does look at the, how they've been the past three years of course it is going to worry you they're a world class team of course they're favourites for the title no one no one, I don't think any Spurs fan is saying Spurs are favourites. Mm -hmm. No one's ever said that. We've never said no, we're favourites. We're just saying we're in it for a shot. We're definitely there. And we know how good Liverpool are. And we know they're going to be extremely, extremely difficult to overcome. But we'll just have to see how the season goes. At the moment, we're keeping pace. Um, but we have to see. How, we have to see how it goes long term. All right. And let's go to Bramall Lane as Leicester nicked a 2-1 win in the 90th minute with a classic Jamie Vardy goal bursting through on goal. Uh, with a classic Jamie Vardy finish. Busting through the corner flag as well. Yeah, and busting, yeah, <laughs> completely obliterating the uh, the corner flag uh, in his celebration. But look, first of all, let's talk about Sheffield United because they are going through a really difficult period, aren't they? Struggling. Because, you know, badly. when you look at how they played last season um, and look compared to how they played this season, I don't think they've won a game this season. They have they? one point out of 11 <laughs> games. One point out of 11 games, Ten. sitting firmly at the bottom of the league. Unluckily for them, though, I don't think they've, ever, I don't think they've lost any game by more than one goal. Yeah. I think it's been one goal every time. I, I actually said to you uh, two months ago, I think uh, Chris Wilder could be the first to be sacked. And looking a good prediction and, now. Uh, yeah, it really is looking like a good prediction. Uh, it's the second season syndrome. Um, you know, we've seen it with teams t many a time, haven't we? But I don't... The thing is with Sheffield United, it's not like... I don't think it's like the players have stopped playing for them or anything or anything like that. Because I still... Because when you're only losing by one goal, uh, you can clearly see that it's just kind of... Things aren't really working for them at the moment. They're just... They're being very unlucky. They're not... Look... Do you reckon they've been just found out a little bit? A bit, yeah. Because... Last season they didn't they didn't score a lot of goals last season. It was always their defence that was keeping it up and now their defence has dropped off by one or two percent and that makes all the difference at this level. Their strike, their attack seems to be pretty much similar to last season. The defence has just gone a bit down. Um, the way they play football is a very unique style of play, um, as we all saw last year with the overlapping everyone pretty much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, for me, I just feel like they've just been found out that little bit this season. 
that I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And it's a shame for them because they, they played really well last season at times. Really good football. Sorry. Really good football. But the, the, the moment, the, the, they, they didn't add any firepower. They added Brewster, who's a youngster. There's a lot of pressure on his shoulders to really get going. Yeah. They didn't really add any quality to the midfield. Um, I think that they, I think the tactics that he plays Wilder can work. I really do. I just feel like I don't feel like Wilder's been found out. I feel like the team has been found out because I don't think that team that team he got every ounce of quality out of that team last year to Correct. every single de- percentage yeah. out of that team. And at the moment, in the second season, their 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 true quality is kind of shining through. They'll and probably, probably a bit lucky to miss out on Europe last season. And they'll be even worse this season, I reckon, if they're in Europa League. I think the fact that they're only losing by one goal is because Wilder is still squeezing energy out of them. Because I think this squad is probably worse than Fulham and West Brom. I really believe that in terms of they're quality a of players. Yeah, they, they are, for they sure. Are. For sure. They're, they're a bunch of hard-working players who are little limited footballers. None of them you would want... Uh, you wouldn't want any of them really at Tottenham or anything no, like that. I don't that. think any any Premier League club would take the majority got, of their. If they got relegated, they're, they're, they're like they're, the they're, 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 exactly. Players, they're yeah. not going to be raided or anything. It's not like that. Maybe a few defenders would go to Premier yeah. League teams, but yeah. like th- this team is a championship quality team, and Wilder has a big, big job to turn this around because th- at the moment I can't really see how they uh, stop this slump with that with that quality. But going on to Leicester. Keep and plucking away, keep yeah, getting they points. Do. Yeah, and, and with um, injuries coming back as well, indeed coming back now. Sionchu slipped off on Thursday, uh, so I don't know if he's got a long term injury. But yeah, Castagna as well, he had a, a good start. He's out injured. He'll be back. Yeah, but something. Ricardo Pereira's back now, and he's a great right back. Mm. Great right back, one of the best in the league. So yeah. they're, they've they, another another team who have dealt with injuries really well and uh, now have uh, injuries coming back, but. I was watching the game against Sheffield United. Uh, they probably deserved the win, but they just about got over the line, like, like we've seen Spurs, I guess, do a couple of times. Uh, and they're also a very good team. They're also a very good team. I just, there's something, I just don't think, I don't know if they, I know they've survived with their injuries. Um, so maybe that is evidence they have the depth of the squad. I just think that, I just think I can see another drop off like there was last season. Last season, their drop off was inexcusable, to be honest, because it wasn't just a drop off for a few games, it was a drop off for half a season. Yeah, literally half a season. They they showed in the first half of the season they showed champions uh, qualifying form. Yeah. Second half of the season they showed pretty much relegation form. And that's what cost them in the yeah. end. Uh, I look. I, Leicester are a great team. I th- I do think actually that they're a threat to top four. But are they going to challenge for the title? Um, are they actually going to challenge Spurs? We have look. It remains to be seen. In the moment they're doing a decent job. You got to say to the same to them. But again, just like. I say with Man United, I don't, I'm not sure if they have the consistency that we're showing at the moment. Mm. But I guess it's only 11 games, so I have to see. Yeah. Um, and Breeze passed the last couple of games. Uh, Wilfred Zaha back for Palace and back in the goals. I told you, that guy's um, a star, man. Yeah, he's Palace 5, star. West Brom 1 at the Hawthorns. He's having a great start to the season. He's really, I think he's realised that playing badly only helps, only hurts him in terms of if he wants to get a move. Mm-hmm. There's no point because if you play badly, no one's going to want you. Um, so I think at the moment he's trying to play out of his skin now. He's playing. Look, we all know he wants to leave. He wants to move. It's no secret. But I think he's playing really well since the start of the season, and I, I hope he gets to move because I want to see him in a big on a bigger stage. Zaha, I really do. I think he's got so much quality, and I, would, I, I said at the beginning of the season I'd absolutely love him at Spurs, and nothing's changed that. I think if he, we, I think right now he starts on our right hand side. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. He walks into that team, I believe. I suppose um, uh, Christian Benteke back from the dead yeah you never know we'll, we were linked to him <laughs> as well no, I don't want him but look fair play to him as well I'm, I'm glad to see him scoring a goals again because we all know there's a good striker in there and he's just been completely off the boil for th- four, three years probably now you would say um, So and, and it's been hard to watch at times because he's been so bad and so yeah. bereft of confidence that uh, you, I just feel sorry for him because I know he's a good striker he, they put him on a even kill with Lukaku at one stage yeah, what, was not even here he he was ahead of Lukaku mm. at one point um, and he, he, he's just completely fallen off a cliff in his form but I'd like to see that Benteke come back in, not on Sunday when we play them <laughs> but I'd like to see that Benteke come back into form because I think uh, he's such a good player when he's on form and he's such a handful and um, I'd love to see that Benteke come back for a renaissance and, get, uh, and, and uh, come back into form One Palace player who I really like the look of is their summer signing Eberichi Eze. Eze I think he's a quality player I really he's do Good start as well well, he really he's made a really start. good start to his Palace career. A bit inconsistent, but when he's hot, 
Yeah, I mean, it, the inconsistency is always going to come when you're coming straight from the championship, like at a young age. I mean, he's going to grow into the, grow into Palace, grow into the season. Um, but the the salt smith nippets that I've seen from him and the good play that he does, he looks like a proper baller. Yeah, he looks like if uh, if Zaha does eventually leave, maybe he might be able to step up in that in that position and 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 provide the creativity mm. and the dribbling that he needs. Look, you've got to remember, he's still very young. It was he twenty. 21. Yeah, he's, young, he's, young. he's still very young and he's still this is his first time in the Premier League so to do what he's doing at the moment is quite impressive but he still needs to find that consistency All to right. be a top Premier League player alright and let's finish off with Southampton that travelled down to Brighton in a 2-1 win for Southampton Unfor- massive game for Arsenal it was, it was a massive unfortunately game. Brighton couldn't get the win and uh, leapfrog Arsenal in the table so Arsenal uh, stayed on in 15th uh, Brighton clinging on by the skin of their teeth <laughs> in the 15th Brighton are in uh, in 16th Brighton took the lead but Southampton um, again coming back and winning the game yeah I know I think they're in the top 6 now Southampton Ralph so who is doing great a job. superb job great over there. job they play not only are they do they are they hard to play against with their energy and their pressing? They play good football when they have yeah. the chance. They're a really good counter attacking team as well. Uh, the four four two is like a throwback to a lot of uh, the previous four four two formations that we've seen. Um, they've he's found a system that's really working for them. And just to think what they'll be doing if they still had Hoybier as well, because yeah. at the moment they got Romeo and Maud Prowse who were doing a very good job, but Hoybier was their main man last season. Um, but look, he's doing a fantastic job. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing by, by Carl Walker Peters as well. I think he's doing a good job of right back for them. And I think as well, if you look at their squad, I think he's a, just a bit like what I was saying about Wilder. He's getting a lot out of those players because I really believe that those that squad is worse than what he's showing. So I think he's doing. A, I think he's making the team better than some of its parts, and he's doing a really, really good job. I mean, Ward Prowse must be in the form of his life at the moment. I think he's playing the best football of his career at the moment. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's been lethal from set pieces as he always has been. He's playing really, really well in that central midfield. He did give away a silly penalty uh, with a handball. But other than that, he's been great. He's been really great. And Danny Ings now back from injury. They've, yeah, exactly. They're in, but even without Danny Ings... Che Adams stepped up. Yeah, Che Adams, he's been really good this season. And although Walcott hasn't done too much, he's, you know, he's been making a bit of an impact. Oh, yeah, I think Walcott's been all right. I think he's done a good job. Uh, make a so bit of far. an impact. And you know, I'm, I meant in place of Danny Ings yeah. up front. He's yeah. been all right. He's been all right for them. And uh, he, he looks like he's found a home again uh, at Southampton. And you've got to say that, uh, that I expect them to lose some form uh, as the season goes on. But you've got to say they're in great form at the moment. And, I really uh, like that Gineppo. Gineppo. Yeah, I quite He's like a bit him. frustrating for me. He he's is a bit frustrating, frustrating, yeah. But I think even Mane, when he was at Southampton, even he was a bit frustrating at times. Maybe. Maybe I felt I felt Mane when he was at, when he was at Southampton was doing the simple things really really well yeah, actually. Yeah, you're right. Um, but still, there was an air of frustration about Mane at Southampton. Maybe at maybe Gineppo needs a bigger stage. Maybe you could argue. But yeah, in terms of Brighton, um, they had a good. They actually, it was a very close game, and they were very unlucky to lose. And it was a very dodgy VAR decision near the end of the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw it, really dodgy. I felt I felt he gave a free kick and looking at it back, I'm still not convinced it was a definite penalty. So I think Lamptey oh who sorry, who was a Solly March got really unlucky in that one. Um but I thought Brighton uh, were probably good worth a point in this game. They'll probably feel a bit unlucky and hard done by they end up losing. Would you take uh, Tyreek Lamptey in the summer? I've liked the look of him. I think I would. I, t- I think he's a good right back. I think I would have him in the squad, but I think Mourinho likes uh, his defenders to be a bit bigger, a bit more physical. And Lamptey's kind of a small, uh, too similar pacey. to Kyle Walker Peters. Do you reckon? Not only that, like you, we looked. Very, it's very well documented. We looked very closely at Max Aarons uh, in the summer, and Mourinho mm-hmm. just didn't fancy him because he was too small and didn't and felt like he'd get, uh, you know, just too physically dominated. And I feel like he might. F- See the same in Tarek Lamptey. Although I feel like in a different system, say if we had Poch in charge, he might be a very, very good option. But I think under Mourinho, he just likes a different profile of player. All right. So I think that is it. That is it of the Premier League review, the Premier League's perspective. Let me know in the comment section below anything regarding any kick of a ball in the Premier League this weekend. Like, subscribe and comment. And don't forget, North London is white. <laughs> <laughs>